It was spring of 2006, and I had just finished an easy half-day shift at the place where I work. It was roughly 5 p.m. when I turned into my neighborhood in Georgia. As soon as I pulled up my driveway and parked my car, I heard a weird noise coming from my neighbor's backyard. It sounded like somebody growling or grunting repeatedly for no reason that I could explain. At first, it scared me badly. All these primal instincts told me that something was most definitely going wrong in this scenario. I'm glad most of them have faded away over time. That was weird to start with, because if you hear a low growl or snarl, surely you would think at first it was an animal. Something nosing through the trash, maybe. Although, it was still light. But every single cell in my body told me this was not just a stray dog or raccoon. I also seemed to know instinctively it was not a human, not a burglar. My neighbors hadn't been raped and murdered yet, thank God. Yet, I also sensed very real and immediate danger. At that moment, I realized it was midweek. Both of the adults in the house would be working late which meant the two high school-aged kids, if they were home, would be all alone. Every part of me wanted to drive away, or just sit in the car and wait for those noises to be over. But I had to see. Had to check whatever it was in the yard was not going to hurt the kids. I wasn't much older myself back then, but enough to want to try at least to protect them. And their yard gate had been busted for years, so... I was able to gently push it open without any real fuss. Our entire street backs on this amazing golf course. Although we were at the far end, there are still beautiful trees and scenery at the end of the yards. Standing over by those trees leading out onto the course was something I'll never be able to explain. It wasn't human, but it wasn't an animal. It stood maybe four feet tall on two legs, but hunched over so its long arms almost dragged the floor. It was a pale color, not quite white but close, looking hairless. Its head was like that of a deer, in a way, with huge antlers that seemed to defy gravity. It was super skinny, almost just bone, and had huge black orbs for eyes. It was growling like a dog would. That low rumble when they are protecting something. I may be a grown man now, but back then, I was just a tender 21-year-old, and I'm not afraid to say I screamed. Nothing prepares you for something like that. The back door flew open, and my 16-year-old neighbor flew out, his sister still inside. He saw something hot-footed into the trees, but always claimed he was thought it was a buck due to those antlers. We never saw or heard anything like it again. I swear, it was not a deer. I was on a fishing trip out in central Alaska with my brother and our friend Mike. We had been putting in 70 miles per day of hard driving over several days. We were finally able to relax from the fire with some good beer good laughs, and guitar music. I'm not sure what time it was when it happened, but about an hour or so into the beer, Mike suddenly put his hands to his lips, indicating we stopped talking. We just thought he was messing about, but he almost hissed at us to shut up. Then, in that moment, we knew something was very off. It was really dark, but the fire gave off some light, and we had flashlights, but mainly the camp was surrounded in shadow. Having already sunk in a few beers, to be honest, at first, although I could clearly see Mike was worried, I thought it must have just been his imagination. He was just seeing shadows or some nosy critter that meant us no harm. We were getting ready to laugh about it, call him out. And then... We saw what was 100% fear on his face. 
Mike has never been good at acting. Whatever he thought he could see, it had scared the crap out of him. And this guy was a guy who had grown up hunting and claimed there was nothing that he could not kill. My brother and I were still facing him, facing away from whatever was spooking him when we all heard the noise. It was nasty, like something being ripped, wet and squelchy. Then we all screamed as a fish head landed right in the middle of where we were sitting. It had clearly been ripped off the body as part of the spine was still attached. What was that? Who would do this to try and scare us? The hell is that, I whispered. Mike was still, staring up behind us. I've seen him get into bar fights with a dude twice his size and never seen that look of fear on his face ever before. Not like this. My brother was itching to get the gun and just start shooting. I wanted to make sure he were armed and ready, but also know what we were up against before we did any shootouts. I still could not believe it. I could not believe it to be anything that would necessarily fall into the unexplained category. I just didn't believe in any of that kind of stuff. Until I turned around. Now, in that moment, I knew exactly why Mike was freaking out. Despite the darkness, the fire and our flashlights and lanterns gave off just enough of a glow to illuminate the silhouette of this creature. It was tall, and I mean huge. Me and Mike are roughly six feet, my brother about six three. But this thing towered over us, and it was wide too, built like a pro ball player or wrestler. Before anybody says it could have been a bear, we've been hunting and fishing for years. We know our animals. This wasn't like nothing we'd ever seen. I'm telling you, it wasn't right. It looked to be covered in hair, but it was hard to tell for sure. It had dark skin on the face, too, by the looks of it. What was clear, though, clear as if it were the middle of the day, were its eyes. Because, you see, they were red. Glowing bright red like coals of fire. It threw something at us again when I saw the remaining body of fish from before. I grabbed my gun and we all began shooting. I'm guessing we hit it as it ran off. It wasn't safe to leave camp in the dark, but that you can bet we didn't get a wink of sleep next day. There was no sign of it. We'd expected to find blood and fur on the ground, but nothing. No stray bullets either. We didn't wait to find out what had happened, though. We packed up and just got out of there, not wasting time. It was only on the drive back that Mike said what must have been the most unnerving thing of all, something I hadn't even processed until that moment. Through the whole thing, it never made a sound. The only noise we'd heard was it ripping that fish apart. It hadn't growled, howled, or hell. Didn't even scream or yelp when we shot at it. And it didn't leave a trace of evidence behind. Just what was that thing? I was almost four at the time of my encounter. As my family and I were going to dinner, we saw this tall creature with long legs walking in the opposite direction. Its head was large compared to its body and it had glowing yellow eyes that would match a cat's eyes, but were much larger than a cat's. The creature didn't seem to pay any attention to our car as we're heading right toward it. I remember my mom had a hand over her mouth in fright, closing her eyes, willing to go away whilst my dad seemed to be in a state of shock as he just drove slowly past, mouth open in wonder. I was in back, my baby sister, who wasn't even two, was in the car seat next to me, but fast asleep. I just stared out the window looking at it. It didn't even look our way as we drove past, just carried on walking, and I turned a little in my seat so I could see the back of it as we continued on. 
And that was when I noticed it was dragging something behind it. That something had left a trail of blood and gore. My dad must have looked in the mirror as suddenly he put his foot on the gas and we sped off. Going so fast, the sudden acceleration woke my sister. I kept looking at the back window until it was out of sight, but it never turned. Must have been too focused on its meal, I guess. My mind wants to tell me it was a deer it was dragging. My dad will even swear he saw antlers. But in my nightmares, I remember. Amongst all the blood I saw, one thing clear as day being dragged along behind that thing. A sneaker... My cousin and I were driving down a country road. It was a little past midnight. We were on our way home from a party at my uncle's house. We'd been in the party earlier in the evening, but we decided to stay over for another hour or so before finally heading home. As we drove through the winding back roads, just chatting about the part, family and stuff, we hit something. Now, it was pitch black save for the headlights and a country road. So we immediately thought it could have been a deer or something else, maybe like a critter that had run across the road out of nowhere. The odd thing was we hadn't seen anything run out. My cousin, who I'd call an experienced driver, he would have slammed on the brakes, but there'd been no warning. Just a bang as the fender hit something and a bump as we went over whatever it was. Being decent people, he immediately stopped the car, jumped out. Hell, if it had been a dog or something, he would have wrapped it in his coat, found an emergency animal doctor. But what we saw on the road, illuminated only by the taillights, was not a dog or a deer. It was unlike anything we'd ever seen before. I couldn't work out if it was a large creature like bird or a small bird-like creature, if that makes any sense. All I know is it sure had wings, large wings, and it was lying face down behind the car and it was all contorted and bent. My cousin, being the good Samaritan as he is, ran back to the car, grabbed an old blanket he had just sitting in the back seat. I didn't want to be alone for even a second with this thing, looking all bent and smashed, with those huge, way too big to be bird wings. I ran back to the passenger seat, grabbed my phone, more for the light app, but I wish I have had it on me before. I grabbed hold of it from where I'd been flung under my seat when we bumped into the thing, and I heard my cousin call out, What the? And when I went back to the rear to the car to join him, bearing in mind we'd only been there a matter of maybe 60 to 90 seconds, it was gone. We hadn't heard the wings, so it couldn't have flown off. But I couldn't even imagine how it could have walked or even crawled. This thing was busted. Sure enough, there was blood and feathers all over the road, and a trail kind of leading back over to the bushes. My cousin spent 20 minutes with a flashlight looking in the trees at the side of the road. Just as thank God he was happy to give up. We heard a noise. Without a word of exaggeration, it was the most bone-chilling thing I've ever heard. It was like a human scream, only louder, more shrill, and was coming from exactly where the thing had crawled away into the trees. That was enough, and we jumped back into the car and drove far away. At the time, I was a young man, and had just moved to my current home in Midtown Atlanta, Georgia. There were several smaller houses there that were built by new homeowners. It was around this time of year, early spring one night, after eating dinner with my parents at a restaurant, Something very strange had happened. After I got home, I was slouched on the couch and had just finished a beer. My folks had already gone to bed, so 
I was just watching some TV. I think the rage back then was Jerry Springer, so I think I remember watching that. I could feel my head becoming more and more fried by the second watching it, so I got up and walked to our patio door. We lived in the woods, a beautiful stretch of forest. Our home was situated among a nest of other houses, a little hamlet of eight cottages surrounded by woodland. As I stood there at the patio door, I took out a joint. It was just some light hash that my buddy had got me at college. Took a puff, began coughing immediately. As I squinted, looking out into the deep woods, I could see a shape, something dark that appeared to be crawling. At first, I perceived it as a wild dog or something, but as I continued on looking, I witnessed one of the most terrifying things I'd ever seen. It was a long creature, crawling on all fours, with what seemed like bare red all skin, red as coal, shiny, damp and glistening. Its legs were kind of webbed, with what appeared to be hooves or matted fur on each foot. This creature had a missing eye, and it was kind of situated on the side of its head. I could hear it making these strange growling and grunting noises, like it was hunting. It was then that the fear began to set for my family's safety. My mind also thought of our next-door neighbor, who, at the time, was just an elderly widow. What havoc and savagery was this bizarre creature capable of? I didn't know the answer. This creature continued encircling a small woodland area, and appeared to be going around in circles. On the front of its head were two strange little horns. The horns appeared to be about two feet tall. I had no idea how I had mistaken it for a dog now, that I studied it so strangely. I wondered, could this thing see me? As a precaution, I safely retreated from the patio and went back indoors, studying the woods from apparent safety of my bedroom window. This thing continued its motion for about 20 more minutes, then retreating into the woods. That night, I didn't sleep a wink. When I woke up, I told my parents. They didn't believe me, and when my dad found my marijuana, he blamed that. I'm certain about what I saw. I can still remember it, even 20 years later, as clear as day. What it was, I do not know. But it was horrible and very real. I have always been fascinated by the idea of creatures, mythical beings, and cryptids. I'm not sure why, but it might have something to do with my fascination of dragons, which I've had since I was little. Or maybe watching too many nature documentaries. Either way. This is why, as a child, I spent a lot of time here in the woods. Even as an adolescent, I was always to be found at our local forestry. We have many here in Cornwall, England. It was in the mid-2000s, 2006 to be exact, when I vaguely remember walking in the woods, alone. I think I was about 17, and, and brave as a lion. I had no concept or interest in dangers or hidden threats. In fact, I welcomed them. I dreamed of encountering some strange creature, a ghost, a ghoul, anything that would show me the supernatural existed and that it wasn't all BS. On this occasion, I was walking. I didn't have a cell phone then, as they didn't really explode until the late 2000s. Kids today have no idea. I was along when I heard a whistling behind me. I was deep in the woods, and the only sounds I was accustomed to hearing were birds and maybe the odd owl. A whistling indicated to me there was another human around. I kept walking and heard the whistling again. This time, I turned around, kind of pissed, because I thought it was somebody joking. 
Maybe some weird guy who was roaming the forest cruising. I didn't see anything. As I turned back on my tracks, I stopped dead. About ten yards away from me was the most peculiar, terrifying creature I had ever seen. It was hairy like a gorilla with five legs, two arms, and one head, and one single eye. This was an abomination. It was shaped kind of like a spider, as it crawled in a long circle. Not noticing me, thankfully. The creature was furry, apart from its head, which jotted out like a sea creature, but mostly a slimy, sickly, bloody coat of bare skin. As brave as I had made myself out to be, I felt practically sick, contemplated running. Thankfully, I always brought along a portable camera on my walk and took it out. My hands were shaking, but I managed to snap a picture. I realized this was a very dangerous situation, and I backed away, running briskly back to civilization. Naturally, I looked to myself as the chemist straight away to get the photo developed. My heart sank when I realized that the photo came out all wrong. It looked like a large red splurge on the film. Devastated and angry as I had told many people, they all thought I was lying. I don't walk much in the woods anymore. It took a bit away my joy. That single experience, now 15 years ago, I work in a lab now that works for scientific discoveries. Often, I hope that one day we too can find answers for these terrifying creatures. The same thing that made me feel anxious and agitated for weeks. Naturally, I developed a real interest in cryptids, and I think that was what I encountered on my trip. It seems to be the only logical explanation. Unless I was hallucinating. But I know that's not true. I have lived in my house for almost 10 years. I love the country, hunting, fishing, etc. Well, before we moved here, there were a couple of reports of a creature that comes from the woods when you shine your light at it. Or something like that. Well, I don't know if it was real or not, but one night, I woke up at 3 a.m. in a cold sweat and had a sort of dreaded feeling. I woke, had to make myself a cup of coffee. My mother, who was sick at the time, and I had a feeling that something bad had happened. I looked out our kitchen window and into the black night that was enveloped with the dark forest. I hated that window. I begged my husband to get a kitchen curtain put in, as looking out that always gave me the creeps. I made my coffee briskly, tried my hardest not to look out. The feeling of dread, however, would not shake, even after my coffee. I just had this overwhelming feeling that I had to get over to the kitchen window and look out, as if my mind was daring me to do it. I had to do it. So I walked over and looked out, into the dead, deafening blackness. But it wasn't in all blackness, because I saw it. That is, the creature that locals had talked about for years. I had always thought they were barking mad, but here it was, as plain as day in front of me. The creature was about the size of a cheetah, but it had no fur. Instead appeared to be waxy, and mangy looking. Its legs were shorter, and it appeared very bony. It had two bulging eyes and a strange face. Its face seemed kind of like it was caved in or smashed, and had several large fangs sticking out of its mouth. If I had a gun right there, I would have shot at it, it put this thing out of its misery, this mutated awful thing. But I was so transfixed, I was still hooking onto my cup, which was burning hot, by the way. I couldn't move. The creature turned to face me, and by force, I naturally felt my body loosen onto the kitchen table, smashing my mug and burning my hand in the process. It was as if the very force of the creature 
propelled me backwards. I kept shaking, crying, as if I had no conscious control over my own body. My husband awoke, finding me cowering on the floor, covered in burns and blood. I told him what had happened, and very thankfully he believed. We are now contemplating selling the house. I mean, not primarily because of that incident, but because I've had trouble sleeping ever since then. So you could say it's related. It's bittersweet for me because I love these woods. But I feel there is something evil in the forest where I live. Something savage and devilish. I want to enjoy life in nature and not live under the burden of such fear and dread. I was walking down this trail that leads through a deep forest. The trails were marked with blue diamond markers, and I had traveled over 30 feet of trail when, all of a sudden, I heard a strange noise come from the woods just in front of me. It sounded like something heavy was moving through the brush. It seemed to be some sort of wild animal. I just assumed it to be a deer and kept walking briskly. I didn't want to scare it. But when I turned around to inspect, I saw something that was terrifying and gruesome. It was about the size of a dog, waxy, slimy looking. It appeared to be bleeding and cowering in a pit of pus. It had both eyes closed and was acting strange, as if it had been severely injured. It was making strange noises. I immediately vomited at the sight of this thing and hoped that if this creature was sleeping or whatever it was, I would not wake it. Thankfully, it didn't. I continued with my eyes fixed on this thing, hoping it wouldn't wake up or notice, but unable to walk away. I stood about ten steps back and threw a stone at this creature to see what would happen. I mostly wanted to injure it, so I threw it forcefully. When I did, this thing shut up like lightning and began growling viciously. All hell became loose. That's when I realized how stupid I had been and ran with all my might, back from the trail where I'd come from, and I could hear it following me now. But at some point, I feel it gave up. I feel so lucky to be alive today. Much more research needs to be done into cryptids when wild forced creatures... There is a world of mystery out there, some of it terrifying as I had encountered. In fact, I still have nightmares about that incident, of me running, of this thing, of the sight of this thing. I hope someday I can find answers that will allow me to find peace. I think most of the world has forgotten that Idaho even has mountains. I hike on them on a regular basis. I don't bring any partner other than my dog. Between the two of us, we do just fine. Every once in a while, I get up the gumption to push myself to go just a little bit further to climb a bit higher. On one occasion, I approached one of the more isolated peaks. You'd be surprised at how still the air can be up there. and. It was in that stillness that I heard a deep growl. At first, I thought it would come from my dog, but I felt his leash tense up when I looked up at him. He did not look like a dog that had just been growling. His eyes were wide open, and his head was turned so that he could just stare at something right behind me. When I turned around, I saw a creature that was just about as tall as me, standing there staring right back at me. My very first instinct was to grab my phone, but after seeing the creature's face looking down at me from over seven feet in height, instantly dropped my phone on accident. I was impressed not only by the creature's height, but also how slender it appeared. It didn't look like it had much more to do it than the skin that was wrapped around its bones. Its long legs somehow reminded me of a chilling photo of the Holocaust, where I had seen bodies that were throwing into mass graves. Legs like long skeletons, just like this creature's were. 
only this thing was much taller. It had two small dark eyes. Had there been any more eyes on its head, it might have reminded me of a spider. It had a large toothy grin, and it took me a moment to realize that it wasn't smiling at me. It just didn't have any lips to fall down over its mouth. So it swayed back and forth like a praying mantis, trying to gauge a jump. The head kept tilting side to side. I couldn't tell if it was trying to display an emotion like confusion, if that was just a part of the way the thing ticked. I was so torn between terror and fascination. I ended up standing there for a long time. My dog was the first to break the spell that had been cast on us. Without taking my eyes off the monster, I dowed down and picked up my phone, which had now been thoroughly cracked. My fear grew at the realization I wouldn't be able to call out to any point. Even if the phone still worked, the display was beyond legibility. That's when I noticed that the more I stared at this thing, the more I wanted to sink into a trance-like state. My instincts told me that it wasn't a good idea to return to that state. So, I began to pick my way back down the mountainside. The thing followed us. It didn't act like it was going to spring on us. In fact, it was more like it wanted us to look at it again. I had no way of knowing for sure, but I expect that if I were to become focused on it again, that's when it would attack. Surely, it was interested in more than just attention. I kept the monster in my periphery, not completely taking my eyes off it, nor looking at it directly as we met our way down the mountainside. It didn't seem like it had been that long of a climb, but in my heightened state, it felt like it took an excruciatingly long time to find our way back down. Eventually, the creature departed, but it kept its eyes transfixed on us the entire time. I don't know what it was. What it wanted, I'm glad that I never found out. I hated hiking as a teenager. I was more the type that enjoyed playing video games and reading books. Although, my parents insisted that I needed to get out of the house and look at the real world around me while it was still summer. Well, I didn't just like looking at things. I wanted things that made my brain work. Hiking just wasn't one of them. My mother would hike all day and night, and if it were up to her, we'd be doing it constantly. We had just moved, and so she had gotten hooked on exploring trails all around our town. The time we lived in had lush green forest filled with tall trees, so many of them that you couldn't even see the sky from the ground level. Did I mention that she also liked to challenge? The forests were rife with thick bramble bushes that grew everywhere, and they made walking difficulty in places. And they also provided shelter for animals like raccoons and possums. I knew that they were usually harmless, but it still creeped me out at night when they would scurry about the forest floors or suddenly dart across my path. Well, one hike in the woods, it finally happened. I got separated from my mother. I had gotten absorbed in my thoughts, and I was daydreaming, not paying attention to where she was. Her? She probably got distracted by some rare butterfly or something, stopped paying attention to where I was, and I just happened around nightfall, the time of day when the forest creeps me out the most. I tried calling out for my mother. Of course, she didn't answer me. I imagine that we're miles apart by the time either one of us would notice we had gotten separated. So, I tried doing my best to pick my way back home in the dark. It was a little bit of light left, but it was just enough to be an insult, as I couldn't see much at all. I stood still for a long moment, trying to collect my thoughts and get my bearings. That's when I heard a twig snap. The instant that I turned around to look and see where the sound came from, I see this huge blur of movement. Everything was a shadow at that level of light, and I swear it looked like a giant shrub had moved very quickly. It was almost like a bad special effect in a cartoon 
when a character suddenly takes off. I called for mom a second time, but no answer. A rather large raccoon ran across my path. It wasn't just the sudden appearance of the animal. It was how quickly it was moving. I know there was another. And another. They were running from something. And it slowly dawned on me that the forest was just a little too quiet. The forest is supposed to be full of sounds of night creatures as they wake up, come to life to hunt. But there was much sound at all. I became aware of a slight buzzing noise that I had first mistook for cicadas, but this buzzing sounded more like something's breathing. I know that statement is confusing, but if every time you inhaled and exhaled, there was a buzz in your lungs, that's kind of what this sounded like. My fear was now becoming very difficult to manage, so I called out another time. Mom, is that you? The question hung in the unnatural quiet of the air for a long time. I got an answer back from the darkness. It didn't quite sound like my mother's voice. It sounded like mine. My own voice repeated the same question back to me. Mom, is that you? Except my voice was distorted and unnatural, with that strange buzzing noise mixed into it. I picked a direction and began walking a quick clip. I could hear light footsteps trolling in the darkness nearby. Almost mechanically, that strange imitation in my voice sounded again. And the longer I ignored it, the more it spoke. Same words, same inflection, same cadence, everything. It was like some sort of demonic parrot. Miraculously enough, I wandered my way back onto a main trail that I was fortunate enough to recognize. From there, I was able to run back to the start of the trail, and there was something about finally knowing where I was that allowed for the panic to fully set in. I found our car and got in. Mom found her way back. She looked at me like she wondered why on earth I would be in the car waiting for her. As I was trying to tell her what had happened, I caught a fleeting glimpse of a tall and slender shadow at a distance. It looked like some part of a humanoid figure, but when I completely focused on it, it became part of one of the trees. My name is Charles. I've been living in the Bay Area now for quite some time. I've grown used to hearing howling noises during my walks through the woods. The first time this happened to me was just about four months ago. Since the whole pandemic, I've been making it a goal to spend as much time outside as possible, since my old job had me desk logged so much. I heard a very loud noise coming from the woods near the trail that I was walking on. It scared me so much, I nearly fell over. And not long after that, though, these sort of animal calls became a normal thing for me to hear when hiking at night with my wife. It always sounded like more than one animal, but they also sound far away from us as well. My wife and I got separated. I was mad, and for sure, I had seen her between the trees. I got closer to see that my night vision had made a huge blunder. This wasn't my wife. This was an oversized wolf, looking both majestic and offended at my very presence. I started to back up, remembering everything that I'd ever learned about how to handle encounters with wild animals. And I forgot everything when this creature stood up on its hind legs and stayed that way. I could then see that it had knees and elbows and hands. The fear was like a bolt of lightning that had blasted all else out of my head. I ran, never once looking back. I nearly knocked my wife over as I went past her. She caught up with me, told me that I looked like I had seen a ghost. I couldn't speak whole sentences for, gosh, a long time. We got home, and I told her my tale then. I'm not sure if she believes me or not, so that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. I 
I was staying at my dad's place for the weekend here in Omaha, Nebraska. It was a school night, and I was ready to go home around 6.30 p.m. I was walking out of the house with my father, talking about him watching me play football on fall weekends. So, we were conversing a long time when he said he's going to drop me off at the gas station that is located by our house. We bowled into this gas station car wash so I can get some popcorn before heading home. My girlfriend and I walk inside of the gas station, which, by the way, I forgot to mention, she was with us. This is where she looked through magazines while I purchased a couple bags of popcorns and a drink. We walked back outside. My dad was gone. His car remained confused. I went back inside the station and checked the bathroom, but he wasn't there. At first, I wasn't too worried, since we were in a well-lit area. The more we wandering around though looking for my dad, the more anxious I grew. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of his sweater next to some trees in a thicket. It looked like he was talking to somebody very tall. I studied him for any sign of a defensive stance, like he was being mugged, but he was standing as straight as an arrow. I tentatively moved to join the conversation. The stranger, seemingly draped in shadows, sped off through the trees at an impossible speed. Dad stood still. I could then see that his eyes were so wide open, tears ran down from them. He smited large and full. It was a troubling sight. He wouldn't even respond to me talking to him, or me waving my hand in front of him. I called an ambulance. He snapped out of his trance eventually, around the time they showed up. He didn't remember any strange figure, and he could only tell me that an old crush from high school had said hello in passing. But he couldn't recall talking to her at length. He wondered at how his memory was missing and I'm sure there was nothing feminine about the figure that was talking to him. We never saw it again, and Dad never remembered what it was. I was living in a house with my two roommates at the time. I'd only been there for about a year. I really should have packed up my stuff and left, but I didn't know what else to do, as I could not afford to move out of state all by myself. So far, we never had any unusual experiences until this happened. My roommate would be gone to work all day Sunday through Wednesday, sometimes even through Thursdays. He worked from 3 p.m. till 11 p.m., seven hour shifts. The other roommate also worked pretty much any shift he could get when he got from his regular job. But on one night, in both particular roommates, they were home sleeping together upstairs in their beds while it was very stormy outside that night, which, by the way, were also surrounded by thick, dense woods. So, the threat of having a large tree fall on us is very real. I made a habit of nervously eyeing the trees through every window of that rental. Sometimes, my roommates would make fun of me for walking around in a circle, going from room to room, craning my neck. They'd ask me what plan it was if a tree actually fell and I saw it coming. I would just tell them to shut up. But this particular storm that night, as I mentioned, was different. I felt like I couldn't see anything through the windows at night. No street lamps and no property lights of our own. If a tree was going to fall, I wouldn't be able to see it coming. I took some poor man's sleeping medicine, aka bourbon, and tried to go to sleep myself. I think I drifted off a couple of times, but the thunder sounded like it was just outside the walls, so I jumped at every single strike. Then I became aware of another sound. At first, I thought it was my ears cobbling together, phantom sounds from the chaos of the storm. But the longer I listened, the more certain I was hearing some kind of scraping just outside the wall. Now, 
my bed is shoved up into a corner, and if there hadn't been a wall in the way, the source of sound would have been poking me in the eye. Well, there wasn't a window there, so I couldn't see for sure what it was. My imagination had all kinds of ideas, mostly a tree leaning as far as it possibly could, before the roots fully let go and this towering trunk crushed our house. But there was no great impact, just that constant sound. The power of the storm died down just enough for me to hear the scraping even more clearly. I was beginning to get used to it and ignore it when the sound started to move. I had one wide open eye, gazing into the dark as if I could see the sound where it trailed off to. It went over to a part of the wall where my roommates were sleeping. They had windows. I did not. I was curious for my own good. Tree branches don't move like that. I made my way over to their bedroom as quietly as I could, aimed my phone's flashlight out the window before turning it on. It took half a second for what I saw to register. I was on the floor. My brain's first response was, how come I could see the face of this thing all the way up here? My rational sigh took hold of me and told me that the creature was just tall, allowing its face to be seen on the second story. It was almost funny with the way the water had matted its shaggy hair, making it look like a drowned rat. But there was nothing funny about these burning orange eyes and the flaring ape-like nostrils and what appeared to be tusks protruding from its mouth. It was like some sort of disgusting gorilla-goat hybrid or something. It was simply a demon. It gingerly ran one long claw on one digit across the side of the house, something like dumb curiosity in its eyes. My roommates tell me that I screamed and woke them up, ready to fight a war. They also say that I didn't respond for several minutes. I barely remember the experience. I just remember being more terrified than I ever had been in my entire life. I was with a friend on the road by my house 4 a.m. in the morning. We were coming from a KFC. We drove by some houses not too far away, here in a small forested area. It has been quite recently that I've heard about this thing, but never have taken it as a big deal. But after what we saw, man, now I am so terrified of what's out there. I don't know whether to believe or not to believe. It has always been something interesting because whenever you see anything about Bigfoot on TV, people call them fake. Then, when they actually see one themselves, they either get killed or disappear for good. Trinidad, Texas, has its share of myths regarding these creatures known as Bigfoots here. I'm not entirely convinced they're just brute beasts. I've come to know of an Indian burial mound that hadn't been properly maintained or preserved. The wild simply overtook it, reclaiming it. Nobody knew what the area was until a number of Native American relics were found. The site also became the source of a number of tales. I've got one of my own to share. As soon as I heard about the place, I had to check it out for myself. I had hoped that I would be able to feel some sort of sacred energy. I didn't feel anything when I showed up. I thought it could have been a fluke. So, I went back the very next day. I did feel a slight down feeling, but I thought that was just me. So, I visited again. No sooner than I stepped onto whatever invisible boundary there was, my heart began to palpitate. My palms became sweaty. I basically felt like I was on the verge of a panic attack. And just like that, it was over with. I tried to will the feeling to return, but it had passed for good. It was so far out that I came back the day after that. I didn't get that overwhelming feeling again, but I saw a very tall and shaggy shape circling me behind the trees. The fur was that off-white color of a polar bear fur but dirtier. It was to match every Bigfoot story I'd ever heard, minus the color of fur. 
The implications of a connection between the monster and where I was standing was far more terrifying than the beast itself. It didn't look at me like it was hungry. It looked at me like it was offended, as if trying to get through to me. I wasn't welcome. I didn't tempt fate. I did not come back after that. A few years ago, when I was about 17 or 18, a couple of friends and I were on our way to the beach for some fun and relaxation. We decided to take a different path to the beach through some deep, dense woods. We thought nothing of it, began walking down the path. As we continued to walk, my friends and I began hearing some very peculiar sounds in the distance. These were definitely not any sounds one would normally hear from animals. We didn't know what it was, but these were very scary sounds. The kind of sound that leaves you thinking twice about continuing onward down a certain path or trail through dark woods at nighttime. My friends and I cracked jokes at first, trying to make light of what we heard, as none of us knew for sure what made those terrifying noises. But eventually, our fear overtook our sense of humor, and we ultimately decided to turn back instead of proceeding on our way towards the beach. That's when the strangeness began to ramp up. The birds overhead were very active, but perfectly silent. Squirrels, chipmunks, and even raccoons sprinted around us as if they were evacuating the area. Even the crickets seemed to go quiet. The bizarre noises drew nearer, and I tried to pinpoint which direction they were coming from. It slowly dawned on me that the sounds were surrounding us. The sources had split up and closed around us. My friends must have realized the same thing. They became more agitated and were looking around like panicked animals. The police to this day doubt my story. I don't blame them. But a lack of sheer evidence seems to be the thin thread keeping me out of prison. Plus, the fact that one of the other people with us that day is now in a mental health facility. The sounds bayed and roared all around us until our nerves couldn't be any closer to the surface. A gigantic furry shape erupted from the concealing woods. You've seen the way gorillas run, right? Well, imagine a gorilla that walks and runs like a human being. A gorilla that's as tall as the surrounding trees. It didn't roar. It didn't really make any displays of aggression. It just acted swiftly. It ran toward us. We flinched, and it passed. And the one of us was gone. One of the girls. The tenor of the sounds changed to something like joy. Not that I'm an expert. Each time I look back on this incident, I strain to remember any sound of our friend that was snatched up. But I recall nothing. Surely she struggled or resisted just a little. Maybe she was so terrified that she fainted when she saw it coming at her. But it was on us so quickly. Investigators have found no blood, clothing, hair, or anything. It's as if she was never with us to begin. That was a possibility they considered. It's something that I try not to think about, as much as it resurfaces in my nightmares and when cryptid hunters want to chat with me. It was the summer of 2008. I was at my friend's house. We were having a campfire. We had been partying earlier in the day, but nobody had passed out yet from drinking too much alcohol. We were still up late, talking about our experiences with ghosts, aliens, Bigfoots, and other odd entities. Out of the blue, one of my friends mentioned he'd like to talk about his own encounter with a Bigfoot. Apparently, early in the year, around January or so, he and his girlfriend left out of town for a weekend camping trip. They thought it would be fun to take her pet dog along with them on their wonderful adventure. They arrived at their destination that night after dark, so they set up their tent, pitched camp, went to bed. They woke up to the sound of a dog in distress. They had both gotten their heads out of the tent at the same time. 
his girlfriend passed out. He could not help but stare in horror at this monstrous ape-like creature that held the dog up in the air by one leg. Like a curious dumb child, it pulled the dog's legs off, and the sound of wet tearing muscle was as awful as the screams that the dog let out. It was clear that he was not going to be able to save this dog, so he hungered down in the tent and waited. When the thing was gone, there was only blood. He didn't know if this creature ate this dog or what, but he stared at that blood for a long time, thinking that blood could have been him had he slept outside. I don't know if he's full of crap, but he seemed pretty shaken up telling the story, like it really bothered him. He's not the type of person to make something up like this. Maybe there is more truth to his story than I realize. If so, that's incredibly disturbing, and I wish to stay far away from the woods he camped in. It was the summer of 2004. My brother, my cousin, and I were on a camping trip near an old farmhouse slash factory that has its own history. I had been there before with other people, so it wasn't anything new to me. The rest of our family went to go horseback riding, so the three of us decided to hang around the park with the forest, which was surprisingly deserted. I have to admit, it kind of was eerie how the park was so deserted. It was a hot summer's day, Fort Collins, Colorado, and there should have been a bunch of kids playing. But instead, it was just three, all aged between 15 to 17, as we were then. My mom had left us a cool bag with some ice cream, which had situated under a tree. Out of the sun, as we didn't want the lollies to melt. I walked over to get them, as we're all quenched for thirst and needed something cold and refreshing. As I walked over to this wooded area, I had the strangest feeling I was being watched. I've heard people talking of this sensation before, but no idea what it actually felt like. I could feel eyes on me, a cold stare that was tracing me up and down, left to right. I made a 360 turn to see who or what it was. My brother and cousin can sense something was wrong, so they ran over to me. They went deathly quiet, and I knew they too felt something stare. Look, my brother said, pointing in the distance, about 30 yards away. It was the strangest thing I had ever seen in my life. At first glance, it appeared to be a bear, which was grounds enough to be petrified. But this creature was no bear. It had the shape and form of a bear, but with brown fur. It appeared to be about 12 to 15 feet tall and came about halfway of some of the trees overhead. It had what appeared to be horns, which were strange things sticking out of its head. In fact, the horns almost seemed to kind of blend into the branches. It was kind of hard to differentiate between the two. This thing stood tall. I knew if it spotted us, we would be dead. We were terrified by seeing this thing. Thankfully, one of us was thinking straight, and my cousin grabbed me and my brother by the necks, whispering, run. As if by force, we all began running, got into the park and hid under the tire swing, at least until our parents showed up. When we told them what happened, they didn't believe us, thought we were just trying to pull a prank. But 17 years later, I know what I saw. It was real and terrifying, and I can't get that image out of my head. I never will. Believe me if you want, but there is something mysterious and terrifying that dwells deep within the forest. Maybe it's a monster, maybe it's a demon, or maybe, perhaps, it's a guardian. I don't know. This was back in September of 2007. Back then, I was 21. At the time, I lived with my two roommates at the time in a small rented house right in town. The place had a huge backyard and stretched out open into a field and the forest line past our fence. Now, me and my friends had permission from all owners to go out there and 
hunt occasionally. Today, I'm a proud vegan, but back then, I didn't give two craps about any animals, so I hunted when I could. On one occasion, in September, myself and my buddy went hunting for some deer, whatever we could find. And dating apps were just new, so we wanted some cool pictures of ourselves with guns to impress the girls around here. I look back on it and I know, the thought is pretty cringy, but we were young. Whether or not we would find any deer was another issue. Even typing this sends shivers down my spine because ultimately, I recall the incident. My buddy had just went to go pee and I was sitting playing a game called Snake on my flip phone. I felt so bad with that phone. It's laughable now. My buddy was away for what seemed to be a long time. Longer than it takes anybody to pee. I got worried. The next thing I heard was my buddy screaming in what sounded like agony. I ran in an effort to find him. And when I did, he was on the ground with a bloody wound on his leg. He was pointing to his right. And when I looked, I stopped dead at what was before me. It appeared to be a hyena looking like creature, with this leathery red raw dripping bits of flesh from its mouth. It was disgusting looking. Its nose and face seemed to be smashed in, but it looked wrong in every sense of the way. The creature spotted me and began to run at the speed of lightning. As if by divine intervention, I managed to grab my gun, pulling the trigger, maiming this thing in the spinal cord which jetted out of its emaciated frame. It did not die, but it bled profusely and ran. I lifted my buddy up and dragged him along the forest floor until we got home. When we told the hospital what had happened, they didn't believe us, but we thought we were just some drugged up college kids. But we both know what happened and will never forget what happened on that day back in September of 2007. Since then, I've heard of people mentioning the phrase dogmen, but I don't know. I guess I have heard some reports of hyena-like creatures that are bipedal. And I guess if I think back on it, that could have been it. But I don't know. The idea of a dogman seems crazy, but so is what we saw. I guess I'll let you be the judge on this one. It was around 10 p.m. in the evening. The day had been cloudy and rainy, and it stayed that way for most of the night. Earlier that night, me and my girlfriend at the time were playing Super Mario Sunshine on our GameCube, until we began hearing heavy rainfall outside. Because of this, the both of us decided to go for a walk in the rain. I know it sounds weird, but this was in southern Spain, and we just don't get heavy showers that often. So, we put on our raincoats and our wellies and got an umbrella. It looked quite romantic out, and it was still relatively bright as it was summer. My then-girlfriend was wearing a white rain jacket as we left our house and headed to a local park. This was surrounded by the most gorgeous woodland. What was strange was that as we were walking, moths and flies kept flocking to my girlfriend and her rain jacket and her hair. She was getting very annoyed, ready to turn back home. But luckily, I had some anti-pest spray and tried my best to help. We kept walking, and as we walked into this woodland area, we stopped under a tree. We kissed. The kiss was short-lived, however, as we both heard a yelp and a growl and witnessed something terrifying. In what appeared to be a horse, which was strange-looking, mangy and disgusting, appeared to have what looked like rotting flesh, gray and pale, and a maniacal expression. This was like a horse from hell. I know it sounds ridiculous, but how else do I even describe it? I grabbed my girlfriend, keeping her from moving, and we both stood there behind the tree, shaking. I had actually ended up biting her, and she was bleeding. I wondered if this crazed thing could smell the blood. I felt terrified. Eventually, this thing backed away, but I knew it was circling around us, 
keeping watch of us. And we witnessed that it had appeared to kill a deer, which was lying maimed and decimated on the forest floor near us. We both briskly walked back home, sincerely regretted ever leaving the house. And not long after, we both kept fighting and blaming each other for going on the walk. We couldn't cope with the horror of what we had seen and we both felt we were going crazy. We ended up going our separate ways. That was 19 years ago. I often think about the incident of Rosa and I to this day. I might try and reach out to her so we could both talk about it again. I feel we both need counseling as we witnessed something from hell. Something that destroyed our relationship and made us afraid of everything. I hope by submitting this story, I can find other people who may have witnessed similar events and experiences can maybe point me in the right direction. It is my hope that I can join some type of support group for people who have PTSD after seeing strange and terrifying creatures that society, the world, and everybody claims over and over that do not exist. At the age of 10, my family and I took a vacation down to Wilson's Creek National Battlefield in Missouri. Now, this was a pretty cool place for us. Most of the battlefield is covered by dense forest. We camped out of the park for two nights straight with very little rain. But it did start raining on our second night there. There is some light thunder and lightning. My parents were experienced at camping so they didn't take much notice, but instead they told us some ghost stories from the comforts of our tent. When the storm had calmed, my parents went back to their tent, left me and my younger brother in ours. My younger brother slept soundly very quickly, but I was still freaked out by the thunder and hoped it would not start again. I guess I wasn't a camping kid as I freaked out about any deers, bugs, bears, or anything finding its way to our camping site. I could even hear a rustling sound just outside of our tent, and my blood went cold. I felt nauseous, wanting to call out for my parents, but my voice could not leave my body. So, very carefully, I unzipped the opening of our tent, just about five or so inches, and I looked out to see what was rustling outside. I still remember, 40 years later, the terror I felt when I saw what was lurking just outside. It was some type of wild dog, but most horribly, it had three heads, like a cerebrus. It was like a thing from hell. It was black and had glowing red eyes. It was terrifying. I promise this is the only thing I could think of as a cerebrus. My eyes were glued to this thing as it began walking around, sniffing. This thing was massive, and the odor of sulfur filled my nostrils. I knew this was something not right. What was striking is its face. It looked all sorts of wrong. This was no normal animal, my friends. This was something else entirely. This being did not belong on this mortal plane. I just closed my eyes and begged God to cause me to pass out. I watched this thing walk around for about a half an hour. It could have been longer. But then, I never see it leave. It just kind of disappeared. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and the sulfuric smell still filled the campsite. That didn't really dissipate for a while. When sunrise came, I was so glad to go and wake my parents. Of course, they said it was a bad dream, and the smell had dissipated by then. They told me this nightmare was childish and delusional. But 40 years ago now, 40 years, I'm confident by what I saw. At the time, I didn't know it was a cerebrus. I didn't know what it was. But as I got older, and my interest in the paranormal and cryptozoology grew and deepened, I learned more about the various kinds of creatures and demons like a cerebrus, for example, and to know that usually when there's a demonic sighting or encounter, the sulfuric smell is often accompanied by it. That's why I know what it was, that it was not from this world.
We were camping at Lost Creek Campgrounds, west of Atlantic, Mississippi. We had been there for two days, and my girlfriend and I decided to go on a little adventure, since we didn't know the area all that well. It was about midday when we first came upon it. About a hundred yards ahead of us, to our right, on the side of the track, was what we first thought was a regular dog. Most of it was just covered by trees, and it seemed to be lying down. We could clearly see a canine head, and the start of its body. We both just stopped and stared over at it, not saying a word. You see, although my mind was desperately trying to convince me it was a regular dog, something looked very wrong with the whole picture. The thing is, you don't immediately think that you're going to see something that shouldn't exist, like some sort of monster, unless you don't believe in those things. We were both very practical people, and never really cared for urban legends or even things like scary stories. After all, that's just child's play, right? Well, if I'd ever heard the long-term dogman before, maybe... I would have thought differently. I would have never ever for one moment considered that they could possibly exist. I turned to my girlfriend and I said, Do you see that dog? And she looked at me, this look of utter terror that I had never seen before on her face, and just said, That isn't a dog. And sure enough, as we were still, just standing there, as if we had been rooted to the ground, this dog stood up. It's hard to explain what exactly was going through my mind when we saw it stand, not on a four legs, but two, like a human. There was no way this large, actual dog had somehow perfected standing on its hind legs. The entire body and even its limbs were like that of a man. Again, if this human body had been naked and maybe hairless, then I would have covered my girlfriend's eyes. I thought there was some kinky stuff going on out there, but despite having the shape of a man's body, it was indeed covered in fur, just like an animal. It looked super lean and muscly. It couldn't have been a costume, not a furry like I thought it was at first. Even though we weren't super close, we could instead see regular hands and feet at the end of human-looking limbs. But I looked closer... They were actually human-like paws. I say human because they were somewhere between a hand and a paw. Think like a raccoon's hands. It walked slowly up from the trees on the side of the track and stood there, facing us in the middle of the dirt road. It didn't make a sound. It didn't move towards us. It just stared. And then I heard this terrible low rumbling and realized to my terror this was growling and it was slowly retracting its lips, exposing its jagged, disgusting bare teeth. Having grown up with actual dogs, I knew this to be a warning sign. One that I knew meant run, which we did all the way back to camp, where we packed up our stuff and left, and not a second sooner. I've been around dogs all my life, and I have no idea what it was we saw that night. But I do know that I never want to see it again. This is a true story of my experience with an unknown canid creature in the woods of Northern California. My first encounter ever happened late one evening when I was out camping at Lake Davis, just north of Sacramento in the Deptford area. I'd wanted to spend some time on my own after going through a particularly bad breakup. Although I was okay, my friends and family had been bombarding me with messages. I was just feeling overwhelmed and needed to be off the grid for a few days at a time. I'd loved camping and nature as a kid. It seemed that was the perfect mini getaway. No electronics, just me, nature, and a good paperback. Although I'd made a snap decision to head out, I had done some research and asked about when buying the tent and equipment to make sure I was not heading into bear or cougar country. This is how I was pretty certain that the scratching and snuffling I could hear wasn't one of those at least. Of course, it was the woods, 
and full of all sorts of terrible critters, all going about their business, and I was the intruder. Still, as I was inside the tent listening, I didn't quite feel brave enough to open up the zipper and use the flash to see what was out there. Sure enough, in the morning, there were scratches all over one of the real big trees near the tent. Deep scratches that seemed too far up to be the small forest floor type critter. The tree also stank of urine, really strong as if every animal around had been using it as a potty. Whatever had been there, making those marks and peeing everywhere, had been marking its territory for sure. Whilst I wasn't scared, I was unnerved, mainly by the size of whatever I had visited, or the strength, if it had been able to pull itself up to make the scratches at man height. I forgot about it mostly through the daytime, and it wasn't until I lay down inside the tent again for the night when I began to wonder about the creature. As if on cue, I heard the scratching, and this time, what sounded like sniffling right by the opening. I had the flashlight next to me, so I shone it towards the zipper and heard what seemed to be a yelp. Whatever was out there was also casting a shadow way bigger than I would have liked to. I almost considered packing up that morning as well as a part of me that was anxiously thinking that, hell, whatever that thing is, whatever it could be, Part of me was thinking, wait, what could it be? What was that thing? I knew I had to stay one more night and try to find out. So that night, instead of fully closing the zipper and lying down, I pulled it too loosely shut so I could open it fast and sat right next to the opening, flashlight ready. As soon as I heard the creature, I would jump out with the flash and find out what it was once and for all. Around midnight, I heard that now familiar sound of snuffling and scratching, and sure enough, it seemed to come right up close to the tent again, like the night before. This time, of course, I was ready, and I jumped out, pointing the flash down toward the ground, which was, of course, where I expected the creature to be. Well, there were feet and legs, but as I slowly moved the flashlight up, getting more and more anxious, thinking actually this was a really bad idea. I realized this was no animal, not in the traditional way anyway. I heard stories of dogmen. I think I'd seen a thread on Reddit once or something similar, and thought the people must either be crazy or liars. It couldn't possibly be an actual thing. Nature wouldn't allow it. And yet, as I finished moving the flashlight upwards so I could see this monstrosity in full, I knew those people had been telling the truth. It was around my height, so six feet-ish and covered in really dark hair, or I guess fur, like covered completely. It stood up straight, like a person, so the legs weren't bowed like a dog, and it had long, gangly arms too. The face was just like something of a German shepherd. I have to say, Despite being absolutely terrified by the mere existence of this thing, it did not appear threatening, and it did not try to attack me. In fact, after I just stood gawking at it for a moment, it ran off. It didn't matter, though. I threw myself back into the tent, zipping it up, as if somehow the fabric would protect me, and sat there all night with a flashlight on me, jumping in every cricket, chirp, until the sun came up, and I could pack up and get out of there. One of the scariest things about this whole ordeal was that if these dogman creatures are real, when they don't even seem remotely possible, what else is out there? It makes me never want to step into the woods or go somewhere secluded again. All these horror movies where people go camping and get killed off by hillbillies, they got it wrong. It's the cryptids you have to look out for. Because if I could come across a dogman as big as a man, that might mean that Bigfoot, the Jersey Devil, the Mothman, they could all be very real. Years ago, while hunting up in the mountains, we heard this strange noise 
that we can't exactly identify. We're pretty experienced hunters, and the one thing you learn very early on are the various noises of animals, and any particular predators that you'd probably want to stay away from. The only thing this sound reminded me of was the next door's dog, who was a nasty son of a gun having bitten one of the kids, and now had to be locked up at all times when the kids were not at school. This was the same kind of warning, but there was no good reason why any dog of any size would be out there, and we hadn't seen any other trucks or signs of another party. My dad and brothers didn't seem to have heard or taken much notice. They were busy. I was fully equipped with a shotgun, and I decided to head over towards the rustling to see what was out there. The first thing I noticed as I got close were the leaves and the branches around my own height seemed to be moving, so I was even more certain that this couldn't be a dog, since it must be something that could climb. It never crossed my mind for one instant that it could be a dog the size of a man, as ridiculous as that sounds. I've heard tales of them creatures, but they were more like campfire tales, like the hookman and the dude that licks your hand under the bed. They weren't real. Couldn't be. And as I edged closer to the bushes, I can make out the rough shape of what was in there, but it didn't seem to make any sense. It couldn't be something that big unless it was another person. I had the shotgun ready, my finger on the trigger, as something just didn't feel right. A hunter's instinct. Still, I stupidly felt that I wanted to deal with this alone. Maybe prove something to my dad, since it was almost always him or one of my brothers that brought home the prize. I didn't want to look like I was afraid, so I edged closer. I kept crepping forward as to not spook it. Then, there it was, in my full sight. I think I stared at it for about a full minute before I took a shot, just in complete shock at this thing. That alerted the others, of course, and they came running over. I stood there for a moment, unable to tell them what I saw. My eldest brother headed off into the brush to see if I'd even hit it. It seems that I had not, and there was no creature not to be seen nor blood on the ground. But I don't know how I could have missed. They were all talking at once, and I was trying to tell them by yelling. It was a dog, but not a dog. Like a man, but a dog as big as a man. To this day, they still tease me about it. My brothers even joke that I saw a werewolf. But I know what I saw. It was the strange creature, but not as giant as I would think. Like a dire wolf or something. This thing was like the body of a man, but the head of a dog. At least, I like to think so. And I believe it's still out there somewhere. This is a true story of my experience with some sort of unknown canid creature in the woods of Northern California. My first encounter happened late one evening when I was out camping at Lake Davis. Lake Davis is just north of Sacramento in the Deptford area. I could see that something looked to be like a golden brown color in the distance. At first, it appeared to be like a lion. I was petrified. But as I looked closer, it was not a lion, but like a dog and a man, but some weird hybrid creature, kind of like a lion, a dog, and a man. I say that because it was wolfish, but also walking upright, and reminded me of a lion in the sense where it had a very large mane on the upper part of its head and neck. It was pretty tall too, about six foot. Its face was, as I already said, wolfish, with huge jaws that looked like they could do some serious damage. I was terrified, and went even to call the Coast Guard. Of course, I couldn't get an answer, and looking back, I don't think they would have taken me so seriously. Eventually, this thing disappeared in the woods, and that was the end of my day. To this day, I still have no idea what on earth kind of creature I saw.
My family and I were hunting for deer in the Pecano Mountains of Pennsylvania. It was a cold, frosty winter day, right around noon. My dad had just shot a nice six-point buck about 30 minutes before. Then we had heard some rustling in the bushes behind us. Then, from what sounded like a half mile away, there was growling. We both looked around and saw the most bizarre, terrifying creature we had both ever seen. It loomed large and was cracking branches with its jaws, angrily staring at us with this cold, calculated stare. And to my eyes, I had never seen such a creature before. As I looked to my father, I realized he had an either. His face was white, and his mouth was slightly open in this expression of subdued terror. To see my dad in such a pitiful state was very distressing to me as a child. But what was before us was even worse. It was a large wolf creature that had large fangs, grayish fur, and navy fur with clumps missing, which revealed open wounds. Its face kind of resembled that of a wolf and a man. The eyes were much more human. A very angry expression laid on its face, revealed dagger-like fangs. I have since never forgotten the incident, and I have drawn many pictures of it since. Maybe I'll have to go and dig an old one out and send it to you. That was 35 years ago now, but nothing has ever came close to the disturbing outline of that creature in real life. I have since joined many online forums of the paranormal and cryptozoology, connecting with other people who have supposedly seen similar creatures. I feel that our government have withheld much information, not only about extraterrestrials, but also about creatures such as the one I encountered. Perhaps, if people knew these existed, they would never venture out into nature, or even have pets of their own. There has to be answers out there. My father died without them, and I feel it's my mission to find a resolution for the many who have been left distressed and made to feel crazy after seeing the terrifying sights of unidentified creatures. I was only about 15 at the time. My older brother, who was about 10 years older than I, had found a good camping spot in a very deep part of the woods. He told me that we were going to camp there for a good three days. So, my friends and I decided they'd come with us, since they all lived in town. We pack up, set up camp. On our first night, it rained pretty heavy, and it gave me this sense of foreboding. Perhaps we had been hearing strange sounds all day, I don't know. As if something was following us in the forest, I had this dreaded feeling, like a premonition, as if something was going to attack us or we were in danger. I couldn't shake it off. Then, on our first night, everything just made sense. I got up during the night to pee, and I did so in a secluded area of the campsite. I heard a strange crackling sound behind me, as if somebody was cracking branches. I turned around feeling a sense of dread and icy fear all over. Before me, about five feet away, was the strangest dog I had ever seen. It was covered in dark fur. Its head was like that of a Doberman pincher. It was kind of emaciated and sickly looking. I felt sick to my stomach and tried to run back to the campsite. But it was as if I was in a dream and my legs could not move. I was sure I was going to die on the spot. I closed my eyes and counted to ten, hoping this thing would be gone. And when I opened them, mercifully, it was gone. I thanked God, returning to my tent, where I did not sleep a wink. I have no idea to this day what I saw, but I know it was something demonic. I still have trouble sleeping and hope that I can connect with other people who have maybe seen something similar. Maybe we can start some sort of support group. For all I know, this thing has killed people. It is petrifying and disturbing to think about. The world sure is a scary place.
I was hiking along a river, the bank of which is populated with thickets and heavy brush. I paused to build up some strength for a final push. Every muscle in my body ached from the workout as I stood there breathing heavily. The heat alone had gotten me, and sweat dripped slowly down into my eyes. I had no idea why I did this to myself, but I really wanted to get into the army within the next year, and I knew I needed to build up strength. I didn't want to be the sissy my dad and brothers said I was anymore, so I sucked it up and kept moving. Although, as I moved along, I felt what was normal pain. This was an entirely different sensation. It was as if something was stinging or stabbing my lower leg. I yelled out in agony, falling onto the stones by the river's side. The pain of the fall was nowhere near as the sore as the stabbing pain on my lower thigh. I looked down and saw that I had a huge wound, as if something had bit me. It was bleeding profusely and had a yellowish slime or gunk all around it. I felt sick immediately. I looked around to see what it was that bit me when I saw a terrifying sight. It was three wolves, standing, about six feet tall, matted gray fur all over their body. They had huge six-packs, ripped muscles. I'm talking these things were big. They looked like three meatheads at a gym. It was terrifying. I was thinking I was hallucinating. I looked at the river and saw the water, clear as crystal, and even contemplated jumping in. The wolves seemed to make a symbol with their hand, waving their hands in various directions. Then, one of them reached out its hand. On its palm, I could see my torn flesh and what appeared to be a fragment of my bone. I reached for the branch over me with all my strength, diving into the water. I knew if I had gotten into the river, I would be safe, and at least the wound would be washed somewhat. I let the river take me about five miles downstream when I waved some hikers down, and they even got me airlifted to the local hospital. I spent six weeks after I contracted sepsis. The ER doctors had never seen such a wound before, and when I told them my story, they thought I was having a nervous breakdown. So, it's been many years since that incident, and I still can't go near forests, or trees, or anywhere near dogs, for that matter. Needless to say, I never joined the army, and my dad and brothers still think I'm a sissy. But I know what I saw. It was terrifying. Like, I had trespassed into some ancient ritualistic site where demonic things happen. I will never forget it and hope to connect with other survivors of similar incidents. Perhaps somebody can inform me if I may have saw the famous Dogman of Michigan. I live in Kansas, Missouri. I love going hiking at all the many state parks here. One day, two friends and myself were looking for something to do, so we decided that a great idea would be to go camping. We found out on the internet that there was an old campground just outside of a town called Ponds Creek Campground. It was pretty deserted when we arrived, kids' play park also being empty. I looked around and I wondered if it was closed, but no such signs or indications of closure were evident. So, I just kept walking. We were walking for around 20 minutes when I heard banging overhead. When I looked up, I saw something hiding within the trees. It was unlike any creature I had ever seen before. It was dog-like with a large abdomen, covered in grayish fur, but it had two long legs that made it appear extremely tall. I was holding on to my two friends as we all looked up. We were shaking. The creature looked down at us and proceeded to hiss at us. We all decided to walk back slowly. We walked backwards, keeping an eye on this creature. It slithered up and down the branches, very snake-like, surprisingly with how wolfish it looked. It turned its head and began growling at us, viciously. 
acting very violent and hostile. Now, we ran. We ran urgently, with remarkable speed back to our vehicles. We got inside and we cried, and we hugged. Then, we called the police. We decided to call the local rangers, who thought we were just playing a joke. They dismissed us pretty quickly, and even threatened us if we wasted their time again. We would all be facing charges. All three of us to this day have vivid nightmares about the incident. We cannot shake off this distress and trauma that came along with this exposure to this creature. We know we witnessed something that was spooky, and we all feel grateful to be alive this day. Perhaps if this story gets far enough, someone will have seen this creature too. Or we could submit this story to maybe environmentalists who can visit the park, find out if there are any truth to it. If it is just me who saw it, I'd be able to accept I'm crazy. But this was three grown women, rational women, all with jobs who are confident we saw what appeared to be a dogman that's slithering around like a snake, straight out of hell. I awoke around 6 a.m. with a full bladder and a loaded torpedo bay. There was no sleeping throughout it, so I got up, lightened my load. There is a narrow window in my bathroom, just big enough for me to see the sky, not much else. There was the beginning of daylight. It was still too early for me, and my first priority was getting back to bed as soon as possible. The sleepiness came back as soon as I had finished doing my business, and I made my way back to bed. About two minutes back into getting settled under the covers, I heard strange noises coming from just outside. My place is just isolated enough that the slightest sound of company gets my attention. You don't just find my home on accident. You have to be looking for it. But the sounds I was hearing didn't put me in the mind of people. At first, it was this grunting that kind of reminded me of a bear. But then there were some snarls and snorting I'd never heard a bear make before. And trust me, I've met my share of bears. There was another sound I'd heard from a bear. Some sort of barking noise. As if a stray dog had made its way onto my property. I would have to make sure it wasn't going to be a threat before I would attempt to leave my house. A cursory glance through my window showed me nothing. It was then, when I looked through the living room window, I saw something. But even then, I wasn't ready to accept what my eyes were telling me. My brain's very first reaction was that I was looking at someone that had been living in the wilderness for a very, very long time. Then, I began to process all the little signs that this thing wasn't even remotely human. He, or it, stared at me intently, which should have been impossible. There was no way that it could see me through the window like that. Its stocky frame was solid and muscular, covered in silvery white fur with what appeared to be a black outline. It had long black ears standing straight up, seeming to be alert to any sounds. I saw a long snout, and it twitched, as it appeared to keep sampling the air. The final detail my brain let in was the long and lethal nature of the claws. They looked like they were purposely designed for a life of combat. What happened next was the worst possible thing for any man in my situation. My brain questioned whether I left the front door unlocked or not. As soon as I moved to check the front door, this monstrous wolf thing darted towards it. I didn't know how something with those kinds of claws would be able to handle the doorknob, but I wasn't going to give this thing a chance. It was further away from the door than I, but we reached for it at the same time. I fumbled and tumbled the deadbolt into place, not a moment too soon. The knob twisted wildly, but the door held fast. I staggered back, breathing a sigh of relief, and those awful claws made the glass of the door into a spiderweb of cracks. 
The arm that came through the window was more muscular than it had appeared from far away. It fumbled for the lock. If this was a wild animal, it knew something about doors, and I knew that I had to be disappearing if I wanted to live. I began running deeper into the house, shutting and locking every door behind me. The monster slammed against the first barrier, hard enough to knock picture frames off the walls and shatter against the floor. I desperately reached into my memory for any hint of having something that could make me equal to this clear and present danger in my life. My father had left me his Colt 1911. I had it up in a box in the attic. I went into the room with access to the attic, pulling the staircase down from the ceiling with a rope, but not before shutting and locking the room's door. I heard the first locked door buckle under the strength of the monster. I clambered up into the heat of the attic, and I went straight to the old burrow where the colt lay inside a box. My heart sank when I saw that it was still disassembled. All those years, and I hadn't bothered to put it together. But seeing the loaded magazine was the kick I needed. So, I cobbled the piece together with shaking hands while standing on a shaking floor. Each time this monster threw itself against a new barrier, the entirety of the house shook. No sooner had I loaded the magazine and chambered around than I saw the black shape of the wolf monster coming up into the attic with me. I had forgotten to retract the stairs, and in the dimness of the attic, I was able to see the gentle light coming out of its eyes. They were this rustic coppery orange, like a wick of a candle. My ears rang from the shots as I unleashed the bullets. The shots that landed on its torso and shoulder just seemed to irritate it. It was the one that penetrated its skull right next to its eye that made it change its mind. I saw some matted fur and blood shower the floor. It howled in pain and fear and rolled down the stairs. I'm guessing through the door where it came in. I stared down at the remnants I left behind. I was pretty sure I would be facing off with this thing again had it decided to come back. I don't know what on earth this was, and I really don't care. I'll do whatever it takes to kill it next time it comes. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be involving the police. I can't possibly see any reason how they would be of any help. Not in something like this. Really, what would I tell them? A werewolf broke into my house and tried to kill me? Yeah, right. I feel like I'm pretty much on my own with this one. So, maybe if I thought I reached out to cryptid investigators, or people like you, I could see some real answers. I think the world's forgotten just how much wilderness Nevada truly has. Mention Elko, Nevada, and most people go, oh, slot machines. People like me that are actually from around the area know that the casinos of Elko are but a dim campfire in Nevada's vast outdoors. We were actually in the wilderness nearly Elko in July of 2008. It was a camping trip with my family. We were in the mountains between Elko and Wells. We had gotten the hard part of getting our shelter set up and out of the way. All we needed was materials to start a fire. We had propane as a backup, but what's a camping trip? without a real fire. I headed deep into the timber to start collecting dry twigs and bigger where I could find them. I thought I'd hit the jackpot when I found a fallen tree that was completely dried out. I was going to go back to our campsite for my hatchet when I heard a bestial and guttural sound coming from all around me. The echoes of the trees made it difficult to pinpoint. It had come up from behind me behind the fallen tree. It was a gray, furry humanoid creature standing on two legs, wolf-like, and it began circling the tree, walking upright with no problems. That's when I noticed that the legs were naturally bipedal. The knees bent, just like a human's. My first thought was that it was some sort of canine creature, even though the face wasn't exactly dog-like. There was just enough human in it to make me wonder if werewolves are real. The face did have a longer snout. 
longer than a dog's but shorter than a wolf's, and the eyes were beady and dark red. In the twilight, there was just enough dimness for me to see the redness, and also a slight glow, I feel. I felt like I was confronting some crossroads of the unnatural and unholy. I had babbled the prayers I had memorized as a boy in Catholic college, but the creature didn't seem to be that impressed. Maybe the devil wasn't involved in what I was encountering, but from the looks of those claws and teeth, this thing was more than capable of doing the devil's work. In desperation, I reached into my back pocket, took out a flare and a lighter, and brought the sparkling, hissing red beacon to life, and I waved it in a wide, slow arc. This stole the monster's attention, and part of me wished that I had been a firecracker. I grasped just enough bravery to step forward, making jabs at the creature with a flare, but it started swatting at the light with its gigantic hook-like claws, and my courage shrank back. But something told me that I didn't want to drop that flare. I wasn't sure if the light was disorientating or what, but where the flare went, its eyes went. The flare sputtered unexpectedly, showering this thing with sparks, and after a few furious swipes, I thought I would end up getting shredded alive. But this thing retreated. Anyway, I told my family what was going on and we cut out camping trips short. They don't really believe me to this day, so I'm sharing my story with you. Maybe you and your listeners will believe me. I live in Michigan, in a very rural area. The town I live near is very small and surrounded by lots of woods. On the outskirts of this town are farms that extend for miles and miles until you find another farm. I have always been interested in cryptids, mainly Bigfoot, Yeti, Icky Man. When I was about 13, my father took me out to his garage so we could go hunting because he thought he had heard something outside. He was pretty startled by what he saw. At first, I thought we were looking at a homeless man looking for a space to bed down. I wondered why he was wearing such a thick fur coat. But that's when I realized that was its fur, and it was not a man. It stood up from a crouching position, trying to make itself look as big as possible. We had some dog years ago that looked like a burly wolf. This looked like her distant cousin if dogs could comfortably stand up on their hind legs. The lips pulled back to reveal gums that were almost as long as the teeth. The claws at its side twitched. It was a complete portrait of a living, breathing, killing machine. I don't think I'd ever been more scared in my life. I wanted to cry, but I also didn't want to show any weakness in front of my father. My dad spoke to me in a low, shivering voice. He said, we needed to back up. We had it cornered in the garage. We didn't want to make it feel threatened. I eyeballed the wood axe directly behind the wolf thing. Even if I could reach it in record time, with the help of the adrenaline, the creature was surely faster. So, I nodded in agreement. We slowly backed up with our hands out, trying to look as non-threatening as possible. It seemed to get the message, but it kept its head low and its lips pulled back. It slowly left the garage and began walking around us in a circle. Something told me that it wasn't going to leave the yard. I acted on impulse and ran for the wood axe as soon as I thought I had a chance. I don't think it expected this. I mean, it actually made it over and got the axe in my hands. I knew that I didn't have time to think so I swung around blindly. The beast's claws were less than six inches away from my face when the back of the axe struck it across the skull. It staggered back and did the unexpected. It fled. I looked at my father in disbelief. He gave me the same look. It's one of those stories you want to tell people, and you want people to believe. But people would think I'm nuts even with my dad corroborating my tale. So, I'm sharing it with you. 
hopefully to get some answers on what this could have been. I've heard of things like the Michigan Dogman, but I'm not all too sure that's exactly what this was. I live in a small town with an even smaller population. We're pretty isolated. A lot of the locals think there's no way this could have been anything but a large animal, or something like that. But I knew better. I'd already read some cryptid stories before, and heard about the possibility of it being something else besides the usual predators. You see, something was killing the dogs. Three of them in the town so far. If it had been livestock, hell, even chickens, there would have been concern, but dogs? Man's best friend is a whole different ballgame. And these weren't your Hollywood-type chihuahua or purse pups. We're talking full-sized working dogs that could be mistaken for a wolf. So, action needed to be taken. The first two were killed in their yards. Torn, ripped apart. The third was in the nearby woods. You see, these folk were positive. Whatever creature was doing it must live in this vast expanse of woods that bordered our town. Whatever it was, must live real deep into them as nobody could think of something they'd seen or hunted, especially no dens or anything. Of course, a few men and their dogs went out to go hunting, so far deep they needed to camp out overnight. One of the men is meant to keep watch, and of course, he falls asleep. Find the dogs at his feet is no longer there. Just a bloody leash. No sign whatsoever of the dog or the predator. Nobody heard a thing. The man is enraged and also adamant that he hadn't just dozed off and the others were inclined to believe him. They grabbed their flashlights and guns and headed further, deeper into the woods, towards the caverns which had been condemned years ago due to being extremely unsafe from rock falls. They get to almost the furthest they can possibly go without risking their lives when the remaining dogs begin howling and whining all together, like some sort of wolf pack. The men can't budge. They just all stood in a circle, howling, whining, when all of a sudden, there was a noise like a crackling from one of the caves, like something snapped and those dogs ran from their owners, raced all the way back to camp. The men chased the dogs, and they didn't want to stick around either. They all loaded up their stuff, and as soon as it was light enough to move out, they got out of there. Those dogs, they took, they were hunting dogs, working animals who were only afraid of their master. We're talking about bloodhounds, blue healers, German shepherds even. Dogs that are designed for this. But they were all terrified. And although I wasn't part of that group of men, I know everything they saw was true. As the man that fell asleep, who said that would never happen? That was my dad. I believe everything he said. There's something deep in those dens in the caves. I know there's something, but we can't get down there. It makes me shudder to think what it could be. I was out hunting in Denton County, Texas, and I just shot a beautiful eight-point buck. Was taking it back to my truck when something large black, and large as a man, fast moving across the path about 20 feet in front of me, leaving two gigantic blobs of mud behind it. It didn't stop running until it was out of my sight line and back behind the trees in front. I could hear it sort of panting. I'd been hunting for 20 years and never seen anything like it. But I also come from a long line of hunters, and when I was a kid, my grandpappy used to tell a tale of old Lenny, a huge black creature he once mistook for a bear. Apparently, the story goes that he shot at this thing until he'd ran out of bullets. But even then, it didn't go down. It just kept running. And the only evidence grandpappy had was that it had even been there were several piles of dung. Of course, all his buddies thought he had had too much moonshine. But he always swore he'd find old Lenny again one day. 
He's long since passed, but as I quickly reloaded my shotgun, I knew I had to try and get that thing to prove to people he was telling the truth. I ran after it, into the trees where I could still hear it. It was still pretty early in the morning, roughly 6 a.m. The sun wasn't fully yet risen, so the woods were still somewhat dark, especially in the tree coverage under the canopy. But being experienced and having already bagged me a kill, I had my vision binoculars with me. I put them on, and as I ran into the trees, gun locked and loaded, and ready to shoot, I saw this thing. Now, they were an expensive piece of technology, one that had never failed me before. I enjoyed a hunt in the dark, so am fully used to them. But the strangest thing was, despite seeing that thing run into the trees and hearing it panting, the goggles didn't pick up a thing. I could hear it breathing not too far away, although it seemed to be moving again as the sounds kept coming from various directions. The goggles didn't pick up a thing. I even took them off to see if I could find the creature with my eyes rather than relying on what had to be somehow flawed technology. But it was as if this thing had just somehow blended in with the surroundings. I'm usually a patient guy, but I was all riled up. Not being to find this thing was making me mighty angry. I yelled something out at it, not expecting any kind of response since, after all, it was highly unlikely this creature could understand. But then, suddenly, it rushed me. One moment there was nothing. Next, old Lenny was about to tackle me, so I began shooting. I knew I got him at least a few times as I'm a sure shot, but much like then, I stood there for a moment, collecting myself when I noticed the same piles. Piles of feces, not mud. It had been old Lenny, at least an old Lenny Jr., but does nothing to explain why it was defecating. I've heard all nature of weird creatures, but one that defecates? What could that even be? I mean, is that usual behavior for a Bigfoot or a creature like this? I was on a camping trip with my dad. We were in the middle of nowhere, and it was pretty late at night. I awoke from a strange dream that felt very real. The sun had set, and it was very dark outside. Almost black, except for the bright stars that were above us. I could hear crickets chirping nearby. My dad was one of those very lucky guys who can sleep basically anywhere through anything, so he was still snoring. I considered trying to wake him for a moment, as despite knowing it had to have been a dream. I'm still feeling very uneasy and unnerved. Something was off. But I also felt silly for being scared from just a dream. It was pretty warm in the tent, so despite feeling anxious, I unzipped the opening, going outside. We'd set up a sort of den area just in front of the actual tent. Some camping chairs, a cooler. I sat in one of the chairs and grabbed a bottle of water, which, whilst no longer cold, was still refreshing, just to quench thirst. I was starting to feel a little better. The dream was fading, and the cool air was helping too. I just sat there, surprisingly comfortable chair, looking up at the stars, listening to my father's snore, and the occasional chirps or rustling from critters and the nearby trees. Of course, the inevitable happened, and once I had finished the water, I had to pee. Despite being a couple of guys, we had standards, and one of those was you don't pee close to the tent. Common decency, right? So, I grabbed the flashlight, head over to the spot we designated the John, not too far from the camp, but far enough away that it didn't stink, and we weren't likely to step in it. Of course, these things always happen mid-flow. Those feelings from after midnight came rushing back. And all of a sudden, I was filled with this inexplicable sense of dread. As soon as I stood there, shorts were on my knees. I felt something that would probably have made my bladder go loose if I hadn't already been peeing. A hot breath on the back of my neck and a foul odor, 
like something unwashed and rotting. I felt it again, so hot and heavy. I actually felt some of the hair on my neck move, and the smell worsened. Gone off meat and unflushed toilets. And as I stood there trembling, thinking I was going to end up as something's dinner, someone's plaything, I heard my dad yell out to me. My heart leapt, and I heard a crunch behind me, like something heavy stepping on leaves and branches, as I could no longer feel the hot breath. I whipped around, the flashlight there, but nothing. I ran back to the tent, my shorts still around my ankles. These days we laugh about it, and my dad likes to remind me of how I flew embarrassingly fast into the tent, half naked and crying. Probably just suggested I scared myself. But I can't shake that feeling. Something large enough to be able to breathe onto me. Something that accompanied with the smell of death. And something fast enough to disappear out of sight within seconds. There's no way I imagine that. It was roughly 1 a.m., August 21st, 2013. My buddy Joey, 24, and I were heading out to our favorite moon-watching spot in the North Main Woods. We had been to this area many times and had some weird happenings, but nothing like this encounter. It's nice out there. It's completely dark. If you ever try stargazing or moon spotting in the suburbs, you won't get to see the true beauty of the sky. All the street lights and light pollution really disguise the moon in the sky. But out there, it was total darkness. You can't even see your hand in front of your face. Not without flashlights. We'd seen lights in the sky that moved way too fast to be stars or aircraft. We'd experienced loss of time and our phones, watches, anything digital losing power, despite being fully charged. But we'd never seen anything like this. First off, We'd never actually seen another person or anything out there. It was always just us two. So, we were more than surprised to see evidence that anybody else was out there. We could hear a low rumbling noise that we just could not quite place. And there was definitely a light source that had never been there before. That was when we also realized we could smell smoke. The light source must have been a campfire, which was really odd. The whole time we'd been going there, since we were kids, really. we never known of anybody camping out in that spot. It just seemed odd. We headed over to where it seemed to be coming from. And then, we saw it. Now, I don't know exactly to know what we were expecting to see. Part of me thinks we want to believe I was hoping for Adventure Scouts. Another part knows I was secretly wishing for a UFO and little green men sitting around it. What we actually saw in many ways was even more bizarre and hard to explain. You see, there were what looked to be three figures. Two looked real tall, like maybe seven feet, and the third maybe five or so feet, smaller. They were naked as far as we could tell, and although they were partly in shadow, as the only light around them was very dim, we couldn't tell if they were male or female. To put it politely, you couldn't see any obvious parts. They seemed to be androgynous. Now, you may be wondering, couldn't we tell from their faces? Well, that was actually the weirdest part. Their heads were covered, and so far as we could tell, there wasn't even any eye holes or anything. They never moved. They were just standing there. We stood and watched them for maybe ten minutes or so, and they never moved never even said a thing. In the end, we were really freaked out. We just left. It was far too weird to even explain. <laughs> 